Demand for developments takes a big hit. Let's have a look. Good afternoon everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I'm sitting here with my afternoon stein of coffee and I noticed an article regarding developers concern that demand for their apartment products is taking a severe hit after the Opal Tower mascot tower defects issues. I mean, let's have a look at what I'm calling the triangle of fail in Sydney, where we've got the Zetland apartments, you've got mascot towers, you've got sugar cube as well. I haven't even put Opal on here. Uh, you've got your Josh, the Joshua apartment building all within a little triangle here from mascot and around. So there's precedent and there is really justification for people to be concerned because you'd assume, you'd hope that the apartment that you're investing millions of dollars in wouldn't be evacuated, wouldn't have these issues. There's a parliamentary inquiry in New South Wales that's underway right now looking at this, well, this terrible failure of our construction industry. So let's have a look and feel sorry for the developers. Okay, I've got my, my coffee and I'll take a hit. And we'll feel sorry for these developers, guys. Australia's top developers acknowledge impact on potential buyers after Opal mascot towers apartment defects news. So because the news is being flooded with the issues from Opal, with mascot, with Zetland, with Joshua, with Sugar Cube, with um, oh, lacrosse, and all the fire cladding issues and i'm sure people are still worried about the masters wiring issues we had a building here in brisbane as well with issues and there was another one now i've just been informed about perth we've had all the issues from northern territory so yeah yeah it, it is in the news just a tad just a tad australia's top developers have acknowledged the risk that buyers wary of high profile defects could turn away from even the best quality units well yes I mean, what would encourage you to invest in a unit if you're looking at one right now? Okay, let's just say, you know, you've you've made your fortune selling all your bonds at a hyperinflated price and you want to put it into property because, you know, the strategy, and someone mentioned this in the comments, was to dollar cost average the loss of your, of your, um, your property decline. What would persuade you or give you enough confidence to actually invest in it in this market? Particularly off the plan, I've got no idea. So Sydney's property market has been rocked by news of unprecedented building defects over the past year, with hundreds of residents evacuated from the Opal Tower at Sydney Olympic Park and Mascot Towers at Burke Street. Well, not just Sydney, the whole country. There's issues in every state. Meanwhile, another two separate apartment blocks in Alexandria have also raised concerns. While experts have previously tipped buyers would become increasingly wary of new builds, developers have weighed in on the impact to the industry. Stockland Chief Executive Mark Steinert agreed there was a risk that recent apartment woes could tarnish large developers in the minds of consumers. Yeah, I think so. I really think so. I think there's always a risk of that. The head of Australia's largest residential developer, Tall Domain, on the sidelines of a property council lunch in Melbourne recently. The more profitable outcome is a flight to quality where people are going with trusted brands. Do you think that will happen? I don't think so. Maybe, maybe I'm just being naive. Maybe I'm sure people will rush to quality. I think people will wait. I think people will wait. These are long-term big investments. As much of the FOMO that we see in the media uh, you know, every real estate agent telling us now's the time to buy now's the time to buy i don't think they're being entirely honest it's just my opinion typically when markets are more challenging or when you have an issue like that consumers become much more discerning about where they focus he backed developments as a reliable form of housing if they were built and designed correctly well yeah sure Property speculation is as old as the hills, I would imagine. So what some of those buildings' faults are illustrated is some of the product has not been built necessarily as well as it should have been, he said. Well, 
I would also say that it's clearly demonstrated an overheating in the market. The amount of additional apartment stock that's, I mean, that's happened in Sydney is just insane. It is just really crazy. And, you know, if we look here at a quote from, from Matt Berry, in 2016, 67% of Australia's GDP came from the cities of Sydney and Melbourne, where both state and federal government had done everything they can to fuel a runaway housing market. The small, small area from the Sydney CBD to Macquarie Park is in the middle of an apartment building frenzy, alone contributing 24% of the country's entire GDP growth for 2016, according to SGS Economics and Planning. Now, Matt's done a fantastic post on LinkedIn and on Medium discussing just the housing market here in, in, Australia, in Sydney in particular and how much of it is leading towards our GDP growth here in Australia. And it's just going to lead to overheating the market and it's gonna to lead to all these issues that we're seeing here. And we're starting to see the fallout. We're starting to see the fallout. So I'm sure out of this, you will find disclosure documents will become the norm and strata corporations will have to get engineering reports and independent reports and verification history of who the builder was and who the architect was and who the developer was. Well, yes, I I need to see. I mean, the Institute of Architects mentioned it in their submission and I wanna go through several others to see what the take is on procurement. My issue is how these buildings are procured. My issue is with the design and construct methodology. So the architects have brought it to the attention of the politicians and I'll, I'll look to see who else has. Because yeah, everyone's focusing on the strata and this side of the argument. Well, I'm thinking it earlier in the procurement, a lot of these issues can be addressed because you don't need to worry about corruption to hide these defects or just incompetence to hide these defects when you build it properly at the beginning. Ultimately, the people who deliver these projects have an obligation to build a safer product. Well, that comes back to the developer, doesn't it? Mervac, see, that, that's the thing, yeah. Mervac has taken the uncommon step of enabling apartment buyers to meet the builders of their new homes at its St. Leonard Square project in Sydney's Lower North Shore. We recently had a settlement night for the St. Leonard's customers and they were able to meet our St. Leonard Square construction crew team. Novak Chief Executive Susan Lewis Howitz said after a topping out ceremony for the project. Well, that's not, that's not really a bad idea to be quite honest. In some ways it's probably rewarding for the builders and the guys working on the project to receive that acknowledgement of the effort that they're putting in. You know, it's good to see. So the team had nearly 150 years of Mervac experience between them. Yeah, well, I mean, come on. She highlighted the importance of developers and builders adhering to stringent processes. At least 70% of the value in a built structure lies out of sight placing the onus on the builder and developer to do the right thing when nobody is looking. Well, yeah, that is a excellent work and that's what, oh, excellent point. And that's where a clerk of works, and I know I said clerk yesterday, thanks for pointing it out in the comments. A clerk of works can help alleviate some of the risk because they are there observing the project during the, all of these pro stages. So, so much of the building's integrity and the companies for that matter comes down to the people behind it, whether it's the architect, the supervisor or the tradie. Fraser Property Group, Australian Residential Executive General Manager Cameron uh, Leggett said while his company had seen a pickup in inquiries and sales post-election, there was no doubt buyers had become more cautious. They're, they've obviously seen some of the stories about Opal. They may be a little bit conservative and a little bit nervous about making the decision, Mr. Leggett said. There's more nervousness in the market about transacting. July was the strongest sales month nationally this year for the Singapore backed developer. He added with most of the strength recorded from the Eastern Seaboard and the Burwood Brickworks project in Melbourne's East had almost sold out with just six apartments across four buildings remaining. Mr. Leggett said the greatest industry, the greater industry felt the effects of the building defects news. Well, yeah the greater industry is. There's no doubt that we see flow on effects from it. And we're seeing it in the sense that people are asking more questions. 
they want more details around how we are managing it. We can talk to our track record and experience, he said. For a company like ours, there's robust and stringent processes. It can get the buyer, it can give, get or give, or it can get the buyer a lot of comfort, but there's no doubt having issues like this makes them nervous about the process. I, I would still say, Mr. Mr. Leggett, why wouldn't you give a personal guarantee to everyone buying? Yeah. That'll give them a lot of guarantee, a lot of comfort. And then your name will really be behind the brand. Really be behind it. You know, get rid of these single use special companies. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see. That, that, that'll that be interesting if a developer ever has the balls to do that publicly. Lend Lease Residential Global Head of Product and Sales. Ben Christie said the developer had not seen a decline in interest in its products despite the defects in use. In our experience, that is a risk averse market. Buyers naturally gravitate towards a quality product. We're not experiencing a decline in interest in our properties, he said. Well, there you go. So even some of the biggest ones are starting to feel the pinch from the media concern surrounding our apartment issues. Regardless of where the economy is heading, the fact that this is also on top of that, that we're, we're experiencing the fallout from this overheating in a sector. There you go. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think. What would you do? To, what would you require to buy an apartment? What would you require? Like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you all later. Take care.